Reimagining Success, episode 237. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Hello, hello. I have a controversial one for you today. That's not like me. I'm usually pretty vanilla. So I'm being pretty provocative today. But hopefully when you've listened to the episode, you'll understand where I'm coming from and you'll agree with me. So let's see. (laughs) So stop following those gurus is the headline. Now, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to name them and shame them because first of all, they're hugely successful, incredible people. I admire them. They're doing an amazing job. This is not a personal attack. We're talking about the big names in the business that have been around for 10, 15, 20 years since the start of blogging businesses. They've got huge followings, you know, massive networks and fan bases, even names for their fans and books and and all these things, right? Hugely inspirational We love to share quotes from them. They've probably got TED Talks and and all sorts. So, okay, what's the issue? Where, Why am I saying that we shouldn't be following these people? Now, a few different things, right? One is, and I've talked about this before, if you're interested in it, do search for that episode. I think I called it comparanoia. So comparison syndrome or comparanoia. You're comparing yourself and your own fledgling business. I am assuming you haven't been in a business for 20 years with their pretty much 20 years of effort and success, right? They started at a different time to you. They started a long time ago. And you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg of what they've done to get there. And so I think even if it's subconscious, you feel, and I'll say, I'll use I here, I feel, oh, I wish I could be like that person. Or, oh, why am I not as successful as them? You know, they're saying similar things to me, maybe, you know, I've got so much value to bring. And that's just unnecessary stress. And it's an unfair comparison. So comparanoia is one problem with following all these gurus. A second consequence of that, I think, is that you try to emulate them. So they have all these diverse income streams. They interview all these big name people on their podcast. They have low priced courses. They share inspirational quotes on social media. In fact, they've got lots of different programs, right? And those things are just not effective when you're just starting out. When you're starting out, you need to focus on getting one income stream working, Low-priced courses are never going to be effective when you have a small audience. You're just not going to make any money. Sharing vague, inspirational quotes on social media isn't going to make you into a thought leader, unfortunately. So if you're trying to copy what they're doing now, at this stage of their business, I don't think, in fact, I can pretty much guarantee that's not going to work for you when you're just starting out. Related to that, they have by now a team, right? They have admin assistants, PR, legal, content creators above all. And maybe for you, it's probably just you and maybe an assistant, right? I have a social media assistant. I have a podcast editor. Thank you so much. And so I can't possibly, and I create a lot of content. So apologies if you feel overwhelmed or intimidated by what I'm doing too. But again, I've built that up over now, what, eight years, I think, since I started with a newsletter and I laid on a Facebook group and a higher frequency of email. And then I added the different social channels and the YouTube and the podcast and the books and so on, right? So they have people who can repurpose, who can, they've got incredible production of their videos and things. They're doing video and audio and it's all being edited and captions and slides and music and headings and stuff. And that's just not possible. We're going to burn out if we even try to do a fraction of that. Crucially, dramatic pause, I fear that they've forgotten what it was like not to have what they have now, not to have an email list of 100,000 people, not to have millions of followers and all these influential friends with podcasts and affiliate programs and things. There seems to be this inner circle of gurus who met at some conference like 10, 15 years ago. And when one of them has a book out, and and I don't mean this to be in any way... um, uh, what, what's the word, uh, tinted with any kind of malice. I just, I'm just observing and, and I'm admiring them again. They've built this incredible network, good for them, which is really powerful. So whenever they're launching a book or, or whatever, they can easily go on. When I say easily, it's still very hard work. But they have this network of influential people who can recommend them, who can you know push their programs as affiliates, uh, who can have them on the podcast and so on. So I think... 
unfortunately, as much as they can say, oh, this is what you need to do when you're first starting out, I just think they're so far removed from what it took when you when you started. And look, I'm by no means a guru. I don't have these huge followings and so on, but actually I hope that's an advantage because for me, I can build a personal brand and a, a profitable business model without having those thousands and millions of followers. And of course, I don't have the seven, eight figure success that they have, but I hope it's sufficiently aspirational to you to be still within reach, right? It's inspiring. It's a few steps ahead of you and that's what you want. So in a nutshell, I really feel that what they're doing and unfortunately what they're advising you to do is most likely not what you need to be doing at this stage of your business. So a few more practical examples I often see people share, oh, the mindset shifts you need to get from six to seven figures, the CEO mindset, you know, you've got to elevate from being an employee to a CEO and and of your business and so on. And I love the intent of that. And it's definitely true. And of course, I believe then that that's what's necessary at a higher level, but that's not going to get you your first paying clients. Me acting like a seven figure billionaire entrepreneur right now, I don't think I could be wrong. You, you try it and let me know. It's going to get me my sold out uh, co- individual coaching clients and get me those corporate gigs and, um, you know, all these things, right? So right now, whether it's your first client or your 50th client, I don't think that mindset shift is going to get you to where you want to be. When they talk about team and operations, again, so important at that higher level, elevating beyond being that employee and so on, it's not relevant for you when you're just starting out. Now, in my programs, my pillars, I do talk about outsourcing, whether it's an assistant, you know, whether it's someone on Fiverr or a freelancer helping you out and so on, having systems, automating, using technology and so on. But I'm not talking about managing a team of salespeople who are selling for you, uh, having all these operational people, having team calls every day to keep, you know, to be coaching them and so on. It's, It's just not something you can do or need to be doing at this level. Most importantly, Any guru of any size, and I use guru lightly, and in fact, when I Googled guru, of course, I got more the traditional Indian guru, which is where it comes from. But I think in this marketing space, and in fact, of course, Tony Robbins, if you're familiar with him, has the, I think, the Netflix film that was I'm Not Your Guru or something like that, um, which, of course, is a bit of a double irony. Um, But most importantly, any leader, mentor, influential figure, public figure has a vision of success and a way that they've got there that will be different to your vision of success and to your path. So again, they started out at a very very different time. Um, You know, it could be, to pull a few examples, that at the time there weren't, and in fact, this is true, there weren't that many mentors and gurus and so on. There weren't that many websites and having a blog that was search optimized would actually help you get to the top of Google, right? Or having a TED talk was incredible. Now everybody has a TEDx talk. I don't, so I'm very inferior. Um, but if but if it was something I wanted to do, I'm sure I could work towards that goal. But my vision of success, perhaps is similar to yours, and that's why you're, you're following me and listening and so on, this idea of freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment, and the kind of lifestyle business, and managing it alongside family and travel and living by the sea and only working three days a week and so on. But still, even if you aspire to similar things, ethical marketing and all these things we talk about, your vision of success is very personal to you and will be different to mine, to all these gurus. And again, certainly the path that they've taken will not be the path you take. So that's why when I teach and coach and mentor, I'm not saying this is the exact blueprint you need to follow, which unfortunately a lot of people do say. That's all very well if it's for a very specific thing, like turning your um, whatever group program into this evergreen format or whatever, there might be certain concrete things you can do. But if it's the whole business, strategies that work when you're six, seven figures, got a team, got a huge following. You know, if I have a following of an email list of 100,000 people, if I send out an offer, probably a few people will buy. If I've got 100 people, or even 1,000 people, the conversion, I think in, in the past, they said there's a conversion of like 2%, right? So out of 100, two people will buy. That's pretty good. But it depends on the offer, And if we're early on, we might not have really effective copy. We might not be super confident with our results and how we're pitching ourselves and so on. Our conversion will probably be lower. And so this is just your little health warning. If you're feeling bad, and and, you know this goes for everything, right? I've got a lot of body positivity now in my Instagram. Uh, I unfollowed quite a few 
business mentors and people who you might argue are competitors or inspirational or peers or whatever you want to call them. Um, now and then I'll I'll dip in to see kind of what people are doing, but then I'll withdraw. And I don't come off social in to- you know, completely. Some people do have a complete sort of one year off Instagram, one month, which is amazing. But I will then focus on what I'm doing. Okay, this is kind of what people are doing at the moment. I like this, I don't like that. But ideally, I'd be really focusing on, hey, this is what I think is the most valuable for my type of clients. This is what's ethical and genuine and authentic to me. And that will then over the long term help me stand out. So I won't jump on, oh, everyone's doing reels right now. Or because the, that's a funny example, because Instagram um, was pushing reels and everyone was doing the pointy fingers and I had a go at that too. Then I withdrew to sort of more um, educational, instructional videos, just me talking to camera, which fit, fits better with me. And now recently Instagram said, oh, we're going back a bit more to graphics and so on, you know. So rather than try to flip flop and follow the latest trend, just do do you, bae, as they say. Uh, probably shouldn't say that myself and uh, and find what's authentic to you what's genuinely helping your audience what you can show up and do consistently and so on and then again find a mentor who's a couple of steps ahead of you not a gazillion light years away sometimes you're at that pivotal moment and to be honest I'm a little bit at that moment now when I feel like actually I want to make a big step change I know all this stuff that like the sort of similar mentors and so on will help me of course it's always valuable to have someone to support you but you know that's been the journey I've had when I first started I had peer coaches in my coaching program I didn't pay them they didn't pay me and I still got huge value but they weren't mentoring me they hadn't had a successful business it was more about pure coaching which is incredibly powerful and doesn't require non-coaching expertise and knowledge in fact I then let me think it through now I think I met a girl who whose message really resonated with me at a conference that we were both speaking at in Greece. And I then worked with her, not super expensive, but my first time of paying someone. Then I upgraded to a business mentor who was further ahead of me. She's now gone way far ahead of me. And now I'm at this moment when actually, if I wanted to really up level, I don't want to dabble anymore. I don't want to work with people who are sort of just a couple of steps ahead of me. I want to find someone who may be, and I need to then be clear on my next vision, are quite a bit ahead of me who can look down look down on me generously and say look these are things you need to do to get to where you want to be so so that's again as ever a caveat but if you're feeling bad if you're feeling overwhelmed icky or intimidated or you're desperately trying to copy everything that they're saying and doing and so on maybe try on following them find someone who's more in your sphere and and get the guidance that you need right now for your business, right? Not for someone who's at a very, very different stage. So I hope that was useful. Uh, looking forward to your thoughts on this one. And um, and you know where I am if, if you want my support. So thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. The Outsiders Business Academy is a self-paced course for you to work through in your own time to learn and implement the foundations of building a profitable business that lets you escape the nine to five. So if you're full of great ideas but lack the knowledge and experience to turn them into a viable business that will actually support your desired lifestyle, or you feel like you're doing all the right things and yet you're just not getting the traction and results that you're after, you have come to the right place. I'm here to help you design a profitable and enjoyable business that gives you freedom from the nine to five. Register for the Academy and get started learning today at onestepoutside.com forward slash course. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash course.